Hey everybody, it's final thoughts time for the Steampunk Rally, which is on Kickstarter. Like I said up front, there's the link for it right there if you want to go check that out. And honestly, I mean, I think you should because this game is really, really neat. It is so clever. It is so much fun. Um, it's a pretty good, solid gateway game. A little maybe gateway plus. There's a little bit of stuff going on. But I really think this is something that anybody can get into the theme. The theme is straight up wacky races, but just what happens with real world inventors instead of, you know, Muttley and um, Snively Whiplash and all that stuff. Really, really wonderful presentation. Very bright and colorful. Love all the dice, constant dice rolling, uh, you know, and um, the jalopies you end up making in this game are just stunning. I mean, you can kind of see it here, Marie Curie, who for some reason, I don't know why, has become a cyborg. She has a, a robotic arm for some reason, but, you know, it's got this big old penny farthing wheel with, with robotic arachnid legs and big butterfly wings, and it's just, th these things you end up creating are hilarious, and, you know, oftentimes I would find myself just moving the pieces around, not necessarily to make sure it all fits, but just so it looked really cool. Um, you know, you really kind of get into the theme as you're racing, you know, through the, through the Swiss Alps. And I love the fact that every new round is a new opportunity to completely reinvent yourself because you are a world famous, brilliant inventor. Wherever you ended up that night, you found some stuff, you were able to cobble it together and rebuild your car even better for the next day of the rally. The theme is just brilliant. It's so clever and so much fun. And, um, you know, I have to admit, race games are generally not something Jen and I go after, for the most part. We, we tend to avoid them because they're often like really have a lot of nasty, aggressive stuff. Lots of take that, lots of oil slicks and Mario Kart style things. And that's just, Jen and I don't like punching each other in games, as longtime viewers of my show would know. We're conflict a, a vo a, a verse. But this game, and this game does have some nasty trick cards. I mean, like I demonstrated one, the grappling hook. But they are... Few and far between, and they're really not very nasty at all. Um, you know, and the, the worst ones are ones where if you really take a risk and make your car a big bloated monstrosity of something, you know you're taking a risk, and an event might get played on you that might, you know, knock you down a few pegs. But for the most part, the game really does let everybody just focus on their own race. And that's, you know, proven by the fact that at, when it comes to the race phase, everybody can play simultaneously and everybody can just figure out, right, these are the dice I've got and I roll them and right now, what can I do? Well, I can give myself some more shields, but if I move now, but then I won't be able to, be, you know, but you know, there's just so much that goes into the thought process because you build. Your car is an, a, an engine that is all about converting dice into motion. And there's lots of different ways it can be done. And um, you, I, I love this uh, that the game works really, really well at letting you pursue the tortoise or the hare strategy. You can go for a very slick, streamlined, little tiny car that is just focused on doing one thing really well. And then you can just, you know, run it, run it, run it. But you run the risk of not being able to get the shields you need to be able to get through all the rough spots. Or you can go the other way and make a big bloated monstrosity that can do anything. And that, of course, is the way Jen tends to play. She um, ends up, you know, she starts out really slow. I mean, she might uh, not even move at all during the first couple of rounds as she's building up this big supercar. Remember that big thing uh, in that one episode of Speed Racer, that long you know, I mean, she ends up building a supercar that can do anything. And it doesn't matter what you roll on the dice. If she rolls low, she'll put them over there. If she rolls high, she'll put them over here. That's another thing that's really brilliant, too. The fact that I love it. I mean, you know, it's so important if you're going to make a design a game that uses dice a lot, that you come up with systems that makes low results equally valuable to high results. And this game does it brilliantly. You want the high numbers because that lets you activate your machine parts that much faster, that much more often. But if you get low numbers, it's not the end of the world because those are easy to vent and you can clear them out really quick and keep on moving. That is such a clever, simple little system. And the fact that your reroll chits can be used for so much more than just rerolls. Rerolls, modification, collecting more dice, um, and uh, you know, and then lots of times they can be used for special effects using the special event cards too. It's amazing just with some very, very simple systems that you can create very complex, interesting, interconnected, combo-related gameplay and it's a lot of fun. It's just a joy from start to finish. Uh, you know, it's very, very exciting, very, very tense. The dice rolls you get every turn is always, you know, but you know, even if you roll, you don't get what you want. If you built your car smart, you have other options. And um, 
so I just got to say, on all, you know, Steampunk Rally does really fire on all cylinders. That's just the best way to put it. It's a lot of fun. I think you could play this with anybody. Anybody would be drawn to it because it's a, it's just a wonderfully put together package. It's a hoot. And like I said, it's on Kickstarter now if you want to go learn more. And that's about it. I, you know, oh, you know what? Okay, I, I can think of one thing that bugs me. And I've actually talked to the designers about it quite a bit. And, you know, they're, they're, they're actually, you know, they, they see the point. There's one thing that can be a problem. Everybody has their cockpit card. I, I demoed this. And what it means is at the beginning of, your, of every race round, you have to choose before you do anything else, before you roll your dice, um, you, before you see what other cards other players might play, etc. You have to choose. Are you going to take a die, a shield, or cogs? Now, early in the game where I've been, that's a pretty easy choice. You, you don't really have a very complex car yet. The situation, you don't have a lot of special powers you're trying to save up for. The situation is pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy to make that choice and then go with it. But towards the end of the game, when you've got a bunch of special effects, you've got a bunch of cogs you could use to change a bunch of things. You've got a really complex car that can do a lot of stuff. You really, um, we often found it very, very frustrating because we'd have to stop and think, right, okay, well, if I take the shield, then that means this, th and I could do this, 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 and this, but if I end up with a bad roll, I would go this, this, or this, right, so that's if I take the shield. Now, if I take the die, that means I could do this, this, or this, but it might be this, or this, or this, or if I take the cogs, then I could do this, 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 or this, and we found it became a really annoying AP grind for especially for Jen because she would build these ridiculously complex cars where I mean she basically her car was this big elaborate flow chart where she could actually trace where okay I put the die here that generates these two dice and I can put them over here this this right but what if I have an extra die then I don't need to generate these dice and I could use this over here and um, you know her turns would become very very painful and so you know before too long Jen and I realized it was so annoying because you want to wait and see, well, what do I roll before I choose? Do I need another die? And it was so annoying to have to make that choice before because it just made the turn so much more painful. Jen and I, we decided to implement, I mean, we rarely want to do this. Normally, we hate doing variants, but we decided to heck with it. Even though it says, at the start of the race phase, choose, we decided, you know what, this is just like any other component of your car, and you can um, choose to do this at any point. So, you could go on ahead and roll your dice, see what you get, and then later on, halfway through your turn, decide whether you want to use the shield or the die or the cogs. You know, because, oh crap, the die was really low. Well, I could take another die, or I could take the cogs, and I could use that to change this die. And we found that to be so much more satisfying. That is the way we're always going to play. Now, what it meant is, it was very easy. So, we just had to, we just grabbed some cubes and um, use them as a little marker so we could keep track of if we'd done this or not. And then we suddenly found our one complaint about the game was awesome. Even still, that's a fairly minor complaint, and it's really going to be a problem for players like Jen who are prone to making really hugely complex simulations and then are prone to being bogged down in analysis paralysis by them as you have to try to grind through everything. For most players, I mean, it might not even be an issue, and still, and you know, I wouldn't be surprised if the designers do actually redress that because, I mean, they, they could understand where we were coming from. You know, they know the game really well, so they don't get bogged down in AP. I don't know if that's going to change or not, but even still, even if they don't change it, it's easy to change for yourself if you just use some cubes or, or heck, even use some excess cog markers and just use that to mark whether you have taken your cockpit choice up front. That's my only complaint about the game, and it's so minor I almost didn't bring it up. But otherwise, what a neat, clever, fun game. We love card drafting. The card drafting is always very exciting. You don't want to give those to your opponent, but you don't want to um, give up the chance of getting this piece you really need. Very cool, wonderful game, Steampunk Rally. So any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know. Uh, any mistakes I made, I probably made a few here or there. Point them out. We'll get them fixed. And otherwise, I think I'm going to end it right there. Talk to you folks later. Have a very, very nice day. So long. Bye-bye.